Welcome to another inspiring podcast from C3 New Hope. For more information about our church and its locations, please visit our website at c3newhope.com.au. great presence of God here this morning, isn't it? It's just good to be in the house of God together. And uh, we're talking about miracles uh, and signs and wonders here at church at the moment. And uh, it's a great topic. It's a wonderful topic because without a God, there is no miracle. And without a word from God, there's no faith for a miracle. And without an ear that's inclined to him, then we can't hear. And... uh, I want to talk this morning a little bit about Peter. What a great guy Peter is. What do we generally remember Peter for? First of all, I think most people will say he's the guy who denied Jesus. The rooster crowed and don't they crow. When they win a game, they crow like anything. (laughs) When the rooster crowed, Peter denied Christ. And we remember him for that. We remember him as the guy who Jesus met on the beach and had breakfast with after he had risen from the dead. We remember Peter as the guy who, you know, just speaks out of turn and says the wrong thing here and there. But I remember him also as a really bombastic sort of a guy. A guy that believed, heard God's word, laid hold of it and stepped out. And that's something incredible about Peter. Another time when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. You know, like, I don't really like washing my own feet, but when somebody washes your feet, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, Mandy doesn't matter. <laughs> when, 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 when somebody's washing your feet, you think that's... So Peter says this. I mean, this is the all-in of Peter. He goes, no, 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 I should be the one who's washing your feet, not you wash my feet. And then Jesus says to Peter, unless I wash your feet, you have no part of me. So then Peter says, well, then don't just wash me feet, Lord. Wash the whole of me. That's Peter. He's gone, I'm all in because I want Jesus by my side. I want his word in my ears. I want his words to resonate in my heart. You know, the great, one of the greatest miracles we see in the Old Testament is when God turned dust into man. I mean, we've got magicians in this world who can make ladies disappear and saw them in half and do all of that. That's all trickery. But God made man out of dust. That's a miracle in itself. And that man named Adam walked with God. To walk with God is a miracle. To be with God is a miracle. To hear from God is a miracle. And that's why Peter is so rambunctious. That's why Peter is so all in to being with Jesus. It's Peter who walked on the water. And why? I believe because he believed and received what Jesus had for him. He wasn't backward in coming forward. And what was it that made him step out in faith when the others remained in the boat? I believe it's because he put his foot in his mouth enough times to know that when Jesus spoke, he could hear, receive and believe. In fact, John chapter 6, I haven't given this to the guys down the back, but if you can pull up John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29... We'll have a look at that together. Once it comes up, the magic of... (laughs) Whatever it is. (laughs) How are we going, gentlemen? Getting there? We'll do a silent disco while I'm in. (laughs) How are we going? Are you there? No, it's a no. It's a no from me. All right, how about I read it myself from my own Bible? Grab your own Bible. If you've got your own Bible with you, grab it. Open it up. 
It's where he's, it's, this is the passage where Jesus says, I keep looking up there for it in the hope that it might appear. You know what I mean? No, don't worry. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that God requires? This is the people asking Jesus, what must I do to do what you require? That's what the question was. Hey, it's up there, look at that. And you'll be surprised at this, I don't want the answer yet, but you'll be surprised at this answer. And this is a question that I think all of us ought to ask. If we're going to be a church that honours God, that serves God, that lives for God? I think this is a question we all should ask. What should I do, Lord? What must I do to do the works that you require of me? Is that a good question? That's a great question. Peter, I'm sure, asks this question a lot. I mean, he jumped out of things to do things because he's just wanting to do the right thing. And here's the answer. Let's have a look at it together. Verse 29... Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. That's the work of God, to believe in the one who was sent. Now, Jesus was sent. Peter actually said that first, didn't he? Peter said, when when all the disciples were gathering around and saying, who who, who did the people say that I am? And they said, oh, some say you're this, some say you're that. And then Peter, out of his mouth, boom. He says, I believe you are the son of God, da, da, da. And then Peter makes this bold statement and Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, because that was revealed to you from heaven. Things get revealed to us when we hear from heaven. We're talking before the service, being a bit silly, talking about whether your ears, what was, what was it, something about, you know, oh, Dan actually, can I say that? Dan actually believed that when he turned 50, his ears were going to fall off because that's what his dad told him or something. And so he was petrified. I mean, he was probably woke up with hot glue in the morning just in case. And then I said, your ears actually keep growing, don't they? Seen old people with old people ears. I'm getting there. They're, these little lobes are coming out. But they keep growing. Why do you think your ears keep growing? Because you always need to hear. You always need to hear what God is saying. So let's have a look at the passage that I'm going to be preaching from this morning. It's the passage of Matthew chapter 14. It's where Jesus walks on water, and that's a miracle in itself. But then Peter walks on water as well. Woo! Verse 22, immediately, some Bibles say straightway, straight away, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So they're just ministering to people. Lots of things were going well. Everything was rosy and shiny and fine. People were getting saved. Everything's going on. After he dismissed them, he went up on the side by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, this is about 3 a.m., Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Now, I just want to to just paint a picture here of what's happening. When we think of Jesus walking on the water and Peter getting out of the boat, we can think of, you know, like the dam that's over at Mount Annan, where it's just calm and straight and there's like a little rowboat in the middle of the of the dam there and all the disciples are in there having their fish sandwiches and just sitting around and then Jesus comes out in the middle of that and then says get out on the water and it's nice and smooth so you can think to yourself well you know obviously it's a big thing to get out of the boat but Peter did it but it was smooth and calm but that's not what the scriptures are teaching us here the scriptures are saying that 3 a.m in the morning how dark would it have been at 3 a.m in the morning it would have been dark you would not be able to see very clearly Not only that, the wind and the waves were huge and they buffeted against the the thing. And these guys are out in the middle of the lake. They're trying to get back to shore. The wind is against them. They're rowing. They're rowing. I mean, I'm flat out getting down and up the stairs at home. But if I was rowing, I would be absolutely exhausted. 
I mowed the lawn yesterday. I've got the tiniest lawn in the history of mankind. It's tiny, but I always go, that's an achievement for me. Mandy said, that's a miracle that happened in our house. <laughs> Get the, mo- the lawn mowed. But these guys were rowing. These were men who were seasoned fishermen. And they're rowing. They're exhausted. It's night. It's 3 a.m. And the waves are against them. Isn't that the moment that you need a miracle? Isn't that the time when you need to hear God's voice? Not just when it's calm, but when it's tumultuous. Because I can tell you, it's at that moment that every voice is going to come against you. Social media will tell you one thing you should do and shouldn't do. We, we all used to respect doctors so well that we go to the doctor and the doctor said... <laughs> I was thinking of a nursery rhyme. If you go to the doctor and the doctor said, you what the doctor told you to do. But we went through a phase where it was, go and get a second opinion. And so if you didn't like what the doctor said, lose weight, you went to another doctor who said, oh, you know, it's something else. Oh, some, you know, thyroid thing or some whatever. Here, I'll give you a pill for that. And I'll be... So here it was that. We, we go to get second opinions on things. We go to get advice on things because sometimes we don't trust the voice that's giving us what we think should be the answer. Or we've tried the thing that somebody has said and it hasn't worked. And in the midst of the storm, there are so many voices, including the voice of the past, including the voice of the present, including the voice of the hoped future. And yet in the middle of that, we need to hear the still, small, strong, authoritative voice of God. And that voice is the voice will cause us to step out in faith and get a miracle, receive a miracle, perform a miracle, and be part of history in our own life. The greatest gift that Jesus gives us is eternal life. The greatest privilege he gets to give us is to be acting and living as a child of God. And a child of God, the scriptures say, my sheep know my voice. If we know God's voice, we have confidence in the storm. If we know God's voice, we are able to decipher, should I turn left? Should I turn right? Should I go straight ahead? Should I bunker down? What should I be doing in this situation? And sometimes we've just got to get that word from God to know and our heart becomes settled and our faith becomes strong and no matter what the winds come, no matter what's trying to force us around, are this, I mean, here's what the enemy does. He creates fear. How many sharks are under the water? Ah, I don't know, there could be sharks. Oh, what about the sea snakes? They're down there as well. I mean, if we listen to the enemy, we will be screwed into that boat. We would be petrified with fear that I will get out of this boat. The enemy brings all contrary things to what God says. So we ought to know his voice, amen. So this is in the middle of the night. It's dark. There's a storm. They're exhausted. They're tired. They've just been ministering and they come out and it's a high. And now all of a sudden it's gone nuts. You need a word from God in the middle of the nuttiness of life. Amen. And so they came, and, they came, and you know, here's what the enemy does as well. He will try to convince you that Jesus is not Jesus. And so they said, oh, no, it's a ghost. Be afraid, be afraid. And immediately Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Let's say that together. Take courage. It is I. I. Do not be afraid. afraid. Come on again. Take courage. courage. It is I. I. Do not be afraid. afraid. Now, my dog Rocky knows my voice. I mean, you know, they they escape. They are escape artists, my dogs. They just love it. I mean, he's a faker as well. He fake limps for sympathy. (laughs) You got food, he can jump up on the lounge. Just (laughs) boom, like that. But if he wants to come inside and you don't let him, oh, oh, he's going like this. But as soon as you open that front garage door, if you're not looking, poo, he's gone. Him and Rex and Rosie, they all go wandering all over the neighbourhood. I get phone calls from people. Oh, I've got your dog outside. I've got your dog. <laughs> your dog's here. I go, which one? And so, 
Josiah's been over a couple of times and the dogs go escaping and the, we can call. As many people can go, I go, well, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. And then if I've had enough, I'll go down the front of the driveway, I'll go, Rocky! <laughs> and the ears turn back <laughs> and he walks back, head down until he gets to the other dogs and then they're all like happy as they like, giving themselves high fives. We got out, we got out, we'll get out. <laughs> Smelling each other, trying new smells and whatever. But Rocky knows my voice. And your kids know your voice. So in the middle of a shopping centre, you can call out a kid's name and boom, they'll respond. Especially if you use the whole of their name. You know, like Ken, Kenny, Kenneth, Kenneth Allen McLean. Whoa, now you've got my whole attention right there. Jesus said, my people know my voice. And you can easily, if you are accustomed to listening to him, you'll pick his voice out in the middle of a storm. So how do we do that? How do we get accustomed to hearing God's verse? First, first of all, we need to be reading his word. That's where his voice is coming from. It is his word. So if you get acquainted with God's word, you'll get acquainted with his voice. Then prayer. Prayer is as much listening to God as it is talking to God. We can turn up and have our big list of 600 things that we've got for him to... He already knows our list. He knows everything that we face. So sometimes it's not as much going to God. And, and um, Gillian's you know, testimony this morning was part of that. I just felt like, you know, I, don't, I just need to go and sit. Yes. And sometimes God wants us to sit and listen and hear. And you know what? He's, some of us are afraid of what he might say. Mm. Even Peter could be afraid of what, what he might say. I mean, think about it. You denied Jesus three times. And he told you you were going to do it. So Jesus said, before the cock crows, before the roosters win, before that's going to happen, you will deny me three times. Jesus said, no, 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 it would never happen. So then he denies him three times and the cock crows. How would you feel? Not like a twoies. You'd be feeling like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I've let him down. I've failed. He had so much faith in me. He has so much belief. He told me that, in fact, Jesus said that. <laughs> I'm going to go all over the shop here because I've got 17 minutes. That's good. Um, John chapter 14. Let's have a look at John chapter 14. <clears throat> Jesus is telling them, you know, I'm going to heaven. I'm getting out of here. And they're going, no, 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 no. That ain't happening. Because they've seen the crowds. They've seen the needs. They've seen the people around. And there are people everywhere who want Jesus. And they're saying... He's now saying, I'm going to heaven. Now, those disciples are all going, to, wait a minute. We thought you were the one who was going to overthrow. And he says, now, you're the ones who are going to overthrow. And they go, oh, wait, wait a minute. You're the man. And Jesus says, no, you're the man. I said, beg your pardon? He says, I made you the man. I made you the woman. You've been transformed from Peter, who was all over the place, to Peter, the rock, and upon that foundation, I will build my church. So I'm not just a follower of Jesus, I am a believer in Jesus, I am a receiver of Jesus, and not only that, we're going to see in a minute, that he puts his Holy Spirit in me, so here's a miracle, to take dust and make man, here's a greater thing, to take man and make him into the image of God living on this earth as an agent, as an activist, as a, you know, I'm not talking about the greenies who sit in front of the trucks and get run over. Man, I wish I was in that truck some days, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about people who have their hearts set on seeing a result for the kingdom of God. I'm talking about people who are going to have faith to believe what God says about us and who are empowered to be children of God, children who are not governed by the winds and the waves of this earth but are governed by the word and the proceedings that come from the mouth of God. Amen. The world needs it. Amen. The world needs somebody who's going to say, you know what, God, take me as I am, foot in my mouth with a heart that's, you know, I bleed to do the wrong thing. I want to sit next to you when you get to heaven. I'm that guy. I'm the guy who just wants to be with you, Jesus. I want to see those miracles. I want to do all that. But you're going to deny me. No, I'm not, Jesus. I'm not that person. I'm never going to do it. 
He's not relying on the perfection of us. He's relying on the heart to keep coming back to him. Amen. And so when he rises from the dead and he has breakfast on the beach, here's Peter. And there he is. And he walks up to, the, to, the, to Jesus, who is cooking breakfast. Didn't recognize him. Didn't understand. But his heart was dejected. Why? Because Jesus had spoken to him about how he's going to build the church upon him, and yet he denied Jesus three times. His heart was downcast, and yet Jesus chose. He said, why is your heart downcast? Peter said, haven't you heard what's happened in Jerusalem? The one who was supposed to be the saviour, they've crucified him. Haven't you been around here? Are you not from here? Can't you see? And I was part of it. I denied him. I pushed him. It was me. When we face our own mortality, when we understand our own weakness, that's where miracles start to happen. Because I can't work a miracle, but by God, amen, Jesus can through me, amen. Sometimes he wants us to understand that in my weakness is his strength. In my failure is his glory, amen. And when I give him the glory, boom, things open up. And so then Jesus... Peter still didn't know, calls him over and he takes the fish. Snapper, who knows what it was, kingfish, salmon. And he breaks it and he gives it to Peter. Oh, Peter's eyes were opened. His eyes were opened. Why? Because of the experience and the relationship and the meals and the times where he had been with Jesus and learned to know his voice. What a day when the day our eyes are open in spite of our own failures, that he wants to still use us. Amen. John chapter 14, 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, also in me. My Father's house has many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Some of you need to hear that this morning. You're saying, I don't know where I belong. I don't know where I'm fitting. Some of you may have walked in here and said, I'm going to church, but I don't know what that really means. Some of you are saying, what is the end result going to be for my life? Will I get a better job? Will I marry the right person? Will I do this? Will I do that? Will I decipher what is... But Jesus says here very clearly, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. And he goes to prepare a place for you. So whether you've been here for 15 years, 20 years or more, or whether this is your very first day, I want to tell you Jesus has prepared a place for you in heaven as a child of God, empowered by his spirit to be there with him forever. And come what may, you'll make it there if you have faith, believe and receive. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way, good old Thomas? Doubting Thomas. Jesus answered, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you for so long, such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say, I do not speak with my own authority. There's the key. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am the Father and the Father is in me, for at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me... Ooh! Ooh! Look at this. Look at this. What's the work of the believer? What's the work of the Christian? What's the work? Two. Here it is. Very truly, I say to you... Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. That's a powerful verse right there. What about the miracles that Jesus did? Turned water into wine, he healed the Lazarus, come out. All of the things that Jesus spoke, he spoke because of the Father spoke. 
when the Father spoke, Jesus spoke, the two line up in authority, the Spirit goes to work and boom, a miracle happens. So let's talk about you and I. When Jesus speaks to us or the Word of God comes to us, we speak not as people that are on our own, but we also speak as people who are in authority, under authority. Jairus' daughter was healed, not because Jesus was physically present, but because the word of authority. And he understood that I too am a man under authority. You say, I say, come, they come. I say, go, they go. He said, just say the word and my daughter will be healed. And that very instant, the Bible says, the daughter was healed. At that moment. And so, to hear God's voice, receive God's word and speak it out, that makes you one of these people who will do even greater things than what Jesus did. And then he says, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Ooh, we know what we're talking about there, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives in you and will be with you. And I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long the world will see me, not see me anymore, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. My life is worth the living just because he lives. And he lives in me. And he lives in you we got a purpose for living, amen. And if we will just listen to him in the little things, you don't have to get out of a boat to hear Jesus. You don't have to step out there that bold. But if you get, incline your ear to him. And he says, why don't you just send a text to that person? That's not hard, surely. Oh, but what am I going to say? Well, ask me, I'll tell you. Just want you to know, praying for you at this particular time. Boom, message gone, word of God, Spirit of God, Son of God, rises up, faith gets going, and suddenly there's movement at the station. For the word is passed around, amen. That's what happens. What if God says, I just want you to say hello and smile at somebody? I mean, you know, one of the worst things Christians can do is walk around with your head down like this. Let your head be up, amen. Whether your souths win or whether they don't. Don't let your heart be downcast because Jesus wins every single day. Amen. I'm not just saying that just as a dragon supporter. I'm telling you, I serve one who's greater than the dragons. Amen. Put your head up and smile at people. Do something different. Be inclined to hear the ear because if you want to step out of the boat, learn to respond when he tells you to do small things. I uh, went on an excursion. I was telling Dan this week. Went on an excursion with year 12 and... uh, just dropped them into the city for something. I forget what it was, down, down near the opera house. And uh, they're all loading up on the small bus. And on the bus jumps on AJ. Now, AJ came on camp to Canberra, and also to Year 5 and Year 6 camps. So and now we're talking six years ago. So AJ gets on the bus. He says, oh, sir, you're driving the bus so good, I haven't seen you for ages, la, la, la. I say, yeah, good, AJ, because he used to come on my bus in the afternoon and then he's got too old and, you know, he just takes his own way. He said, so good to see you. And then he said this. He said, I remember when we were at Canberra at Questacon and I was broke and you paid for part of, in fact, you paid for the whole thing, of the toy that I wanted. Just a tiny little thing. But he remembered it. And I would encourage you to hear God's voice on those tiny little things. Being kind, being gracious, being generous. Just telling somebody, I'm praying for you. If, and, and don't wait. Here's another good tip. This is one that Barry Chant taught me. He said, when somebody's sick and they say, can you pray for me? Do it right there, right then. You won't forget, and they, they know that you're going to pray for them. It's those little things that add up to moments then where you're going to step out of that boat when the wind and the waves are around about you. And Jesus promises the Holy Spirit for us to be with us. And the facts in the New Testament speak for themselves. Stephen, 
Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power. Wouldn't you like to be a person full of God's grace and power? Performed great wonders and signs among the people. What about Peter? Here's Peter. Denied Jesus three times. Yeah, stepped out of the boat and look at what happens here. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping. I mean, have you ever had a cramped leg? And then that cramp goes? And you go, whew, I feel. I mean, this guy's walking and leaping and praising God. Why? Because Peter dared to step out in faith. He dared to step out of the boat. He dared to say, Jesus, wash all of me. He dared to say, Lord, I'm going to not deny you. He dared to say, I'm going to hear God's voice. And here he is doing it. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. What about this? As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by and they would be healed. Peter's shadow. You know what that tells me? There's a light shining on the inside of him that his shadow might cast something. It was the light on the inside that was greater than Peter's shadow. But when we put ourselves in a position where we say, God, use me for your kingdom, we listen to what he says, we do what he says, we act in faith, then it doesn't matter where our shadow lands, where our actions lands, God can use it, amen. And people are healed and set free and people start, the lights come on in the house and people go, you know what, I love being around these Christians. Christians. That's what's happening in our youth right now. Just love being around them because they're enthusiastic, they're passionate, they're, you know, but, you know, you've got a few oldies over here. I shouldn't be looking in any direction there, should I? <laughs> Who are giving you a run for their money? I mean, they've got tenacity, they've got patience. Sake. I look at somebody like Maureen Schultz down there. I'm not saying you're old, Maureen, just don't throw stabs at me or anything right now, but I am saying you're a woman of faith. And I'm saying there's strength around about you. Sitting next to her, Mary, I mean, there's a power-packed house right there. I mean, if you're sitting in there, you should be quivering in your sheets, in your sheets, in your seats, because, bang, there's power right there. Look over here and you see the, um, can't say the last name, but the lovely couple at the front here. Book one, no disease. These fellas, like Andrew Gray here, you've got lots of people. Look at Doug Nichols, oh, Brenda Bell. Hey, come on, come on. Look over here, you see the O'Connors, Lily O'Connor playing bass like a champion today. Hey, I mean, boom, chuckalaka, boom, boom. Woo, it was good gear, good gear. And you've got Melissa Schultz over there. You've got so many people here that are serving God with all their heart and all their soul and all their strength. Look at Joel H- Hatava here. My old mate, eh? You think setting up chairs is an easy thing to do? You think giving water to pastors is an easy thing to do? But he's here faithfully doing it every single week. And what does God say? Well done, good and faithful servant. And what does God say? Hey, I'm going to give you some secrets from heaven. And when you pray for the sick, they shall be healed. Amen. So that was Peter. Paul did a few miracles himself as well. Acts chapter 14, verse 8. In Lystra, there was a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking and Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. And at that, the man jumped up and began to walk. And so let's go back to our original passage. Here's where Jesus says this. They all think it's a ghost. But then Peter says this, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Say that with me. Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter, Peter heard the voice. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the storm, Peter heard the voice. And then he said this, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. He heard the voice that he knew. He understood the voice that he knew. It was dark It was stormy. There were 11 other disciples sitting in that boat. But Peter was the one who said, if it's you, say the word and I'll come to you. Jesus said, come. And Rocky's ears go and Peter's ears go and he walks out on the water. Now everybody says this. Then Peter got out of the boat and and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind... 
He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Now, I've heard some people say that here's the guy and what little faith Peter had because he looked at the winds. I'm thinking, hang on. He's out of the boat in the middle of a storm and the other, 12, other 11 disciples are sitting in the boat. I'm not saying he's a man of little faith. I'm saying he's a man who stepped out in faith but then saw the problems that were around about him and just had to refocus. And here's what happens. Immediately, I love this word. It's three times already we've heard it. Immediately, immediately, immediately. When you have faith, God responds. Immediately, immediately, immediately. The answer might not come straight away, but God's response is immediately. Then Peter got down and immediately reached out his hand and caught him. And here's what some commentators say. They say, Jesus said, you of little faith. I don't read it like that at all. I read it like this. <laughs> Peter, you of little faith, come on. You can do this. I believe in you. You can walk on the water. You've already done it. Just keep coming my way. I see Jesus laughing with Peter and enjoying the moment because when we hear God's word, we hear his heart, we have the relationship with him. The spirit of God gets between us and holds on to us and then he lifts his hand and Peter continues to walk on the water. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind blew down. And then those who were in the worship boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. Thank God for Peter, amen. He knew he was the Son of God before all the storm finished. He knew he was the Son of God before he got out of the boat. He knew the voice. And I encourage you, church, let's know the voice of God. My sheep know my voice. You know the voice by reading the word, praying, and listening to trusted friends around about you. I'm telling you here this morning, amen. God wants to give you faith. He wants to give you courage. And he says, it is I. Do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid. And that, my friends, is the word of the Lord. We hope you've been encouraged by this message. For more information about C3 New Hope and its locations, please visit our website at c3newhope.com.au.